All right, so let me show you guys how I like to make my cheddar broccoli and rice casserole. Now, before we get too far into this, if you wanna leave out the protein altogether, you can absolutely still make this recipe and it would just be broccoli cheddar rice, which would be absolutely delicious. I eat that all the time. But when I want it to be a meal in itself, I add protein to it. So that's what we're gonna do today because I have a lot of leftover stuff from my soup series that I was filming for you guys and I'm not about to let it go to waste. So I'm gonna show y'all how I'm gonna turn all of this stuff into one beautiful dish. So I have two heads of broccoli. One is a little bit larger than the other. I have some leftover shrimp here. These are uncooked, but they're relatively large. I would say medium to large size and that I would say this is roughly about a quarter pound or so, maybe a little bit more. You can add in as much or as little as you would like. I have one can of cream of mushroom, one can of cream of chicken with herbs. Both of those cans are 10.5 uh, 10 ounce cans. I have the Nord Chicken Bouillon, the Kinder's Buttery Poultry Blend, the Salt-Free Garlic and Herb from McCormick, some paprika, black peppercorn, coarse kosher salt, heavy whipping cream. I have an eight ounce block of Tillamook sharp, sharp cheddar. I have the other half of my Borson cheese. You guys saw me use that in a recipe recently, so I'm gonna make use of that. And then I had some leftover cheese from when I made my white chicken chili. So this is about four ounces of pepper jack and four ounces of Monterey Jack. And I'm going to be using two cups of cooked jasmine rice. You see that? You see that? You see that? Don't ask me for the damn ingredient list. Come on, child, let's get to cooking. Now, I just wanna say this about the rice. You do not have to use jasmine rice. You can use whatever type of rice that you would like. I just prefer to use jasmine rice for pretty much everything that I eat. But no matter the case, just understand this. I think that it is best to make this dish when the rice is a day old or at least allow enough time to go in between so that a majority of the moisture can be drawn out from the rice. I feel like a lot of the reasons why most people's cheddar broccoli rice kind of turns out kind of soggy and the rice is overcooked is because they are taking freshly cooked rice and then putting it in the oven and don't realize that that's just gonna overcook the rice. So I find that if you either make the rice the day before or if you're gonna make it on the same day, make it a couple of hours before you actually plan on baking it so that a majority of the moisture can run off. So just understand that the next time you see me back with this rice, a lot of time will have gone past. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing two cups of this and just make sure that you are washing your rice until the water runs clear. Now for the chicken that I'm using today, I'm gonna to be using um, boneless, skinless chicken breast. And these are actually paper thin. These are the same chicken breast that I would use if I was making my chicken parm or chicken cutlets. So I'm gonna be a little bit more light-handed with this chicken if I were to be using a thicker cut of chicken breast. So just keep that in mind. Um, I typically like to make this with chicken thighs, but I also know how to not overcook my chicken, so I'm not really concerned. So that just goes to show that you can really use whatever chicken you want. So I'm gonna start off by adding in one tablespoon of the buttery poultry blend by Kinders, a half a tablespoon of the salt-free garlic and herb seasoning, one teaspoon of the Nord chicken bouillon powder, just a few splashes of some neutral oil. This is avocado oil is what I'm using today. A few dashes of paprika and some crushed black peppercorn. We're gonna give all of this a good massage. And I just want to point out, remember, I said that this is thinly sliced chicken breast. So I want you to look at about how thin this is. There's only about four or five slices in here. So in all actuality, this is probably no more than either one large chicken breast or one large chicken breast and like a slice of another one. So it's not as much chicken as you think. I'm now gonna go ahead and start to cook off my chicken. And you want to make sure that this chicken is fully cooked but I don't want it to steam, so I'm not gonna overcrowd it. So I'm only gonna add in about three pieces at a time. I have gone in and peeled and deveined my beautiful shrimp. I'm only going to be adding in one teaspoon of the salt-free garlic and herb to this. We're not gonna be adding in any salt. We have enough salt on that chicken, and remember, you're also gonna be adding in cheese and those cream of mushroom and cream of chicken soups. That's also salty, so do not add any salt to the shrimp itself. I'm also going to add in just a splash of neutral oil and then give that a nice massage. And for good measure, let's add in a few teaspoons of paprika just so we can have some nice color on them. These chicken cutlets have been cooking for roughly about one to two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. Look at how beautiful that chicken looks. Alrighty, my chicken cutlets are done. And always make sure that you're using clean tongs when you're taking out the cooked chicken. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but just in case. Don't use the same ones with the raw 
that you're taking out to cook. Now that this is fully cooked, we can go on ahead and sit this to the side. I'm gonna repeat that process to all the chicken. We're now gonna go ahead and cook off the shrimp, but let me just say this now. I would rather you undercook the shrimp now at this stage than to overcook them, because remember, this is going to end up going in the oven. So if you overcook them at this stage, by the time you put them in the oven, when the cheese and everything needs to melt, they're gonna turn into rubber. So just be mindful of how long you are cooking off your shrimp. I've added in some more neutral oil, and now we can go on ahead and add these bad boys in. Again, don't overcook them. I would say with the heat setting that I have these on, these shrimp have cooked for no more than two minutes. I'm gonna go on ahead and remove these out of the pot and turn the pan down to low. Now that my chicken and my beautiful shrimp are all done, I'm gonna go on ahead and chop all of these down. You want them to be nice and small. You don't want, you know, huge chunks in it. And I'm going to reserve maybe two shrimp or so to the side so that I can have it for presentation purposes. But I'm gonna chop all of this down. And I just wanted to point out before we go too far, as you can see, this is probably about two cups worth of chopped up cooked shrimp. Those shrimp that I had were very, very big. So if you can only find smaller shrimp, then, you know, just double it up. The good thing about this recipe is there is no right or wrong way when it comes to the quantity of the protein you put in. You really put in as much as you want. So this is about how much chicken I've chopped down. I kind of want it to be equal amounts of the shrimp and the chicken. And I have this left over, which is great because I can have that on a salad or just eat it by itself. But now that all of that's chopped up, let's continue on. I've gone ahead and chopped down my broccoli nice and small. Once again, you can chop it as big or small as you would like. I'm gonna blanch this in some boiling water for two minutes. I do not want this to overcook. Okay, so make sure that you guys have everything lined up and ready to go. I have all of my cheeses here. Remember, like I said, Either use day-old rice or make sure that there is a significant amount of time that's passed by once you initially cook the rice. That's two cups of jasmine rice. I have my chicken and my shrimp, my broccoli, my can of cream of mushroom, the cream of chicken with herb. I'm going to be using half and half instead of heavy whipping cream. I decided to switch that out. And then that sharp cheddar, and I've reserved a little bit because I'm going to shred some of it on the top. So now that we have all of this ready to go, we can go on ahead and assemble it all together. Over a very low heat, we can go on ahead and add in both of the cans, cream of chicken with herb and the cream of mushroom. Add those both to the pot. Make sure that the heat is on low though. We can now also go on ahead and add in one cup of the half and half. Go ahead and add in the Borsin cheese, the pepper jack and the Monterey Jack cheese. And go on ahead and add in that sharp cheddar cheese as well and give all of this a good mix. Remember to make sure your heat is not up too high and just keep on whisking this until all of it is fully incorporated. We can now go ahead and add the rice to the pot as well. Go ahead and fold all of that in directly to your rice. If it starts to look like it's getting too thick, you can always gradually add in more half and half. Or if you want, you could add in some unsalted, don't use salted, but you could use unsalted chicken broth if you don't wanna use any more half and half. Go ahead and now add in the broccoli to the pot and give that a mix as well. Now at this stage, if you wanted to, you could completely stop and you could just have some delicious cheddar broccoli rice and just call it a day, put it in the oven and let it do its thing. But like I said, I'm turning this into a casserole. So I'm gonna go on ahead and now add in my shrimp and my chicken. Also know that the moment that that cheese was melted, I went on ahead and turned the heat off. You do not want the heat on this to be rolling or you will, go, you will end up overcooking the rice and you don't want that. So let's give all of this a good mix. My God. Oh, bitch, this is going to be good. You can now go on ahead and transfer all of this deliciousness directly into my baking dish. Just like so. Look at that. My God. Now that I've gone on ahead and smoothed it across the top, I'm going to take that last little bit of that sharp cheddar cheese and just shred that right across the top here. Now that we have everything in the pan, I've transferred this over to a secondary cookie sheet so that way it's easier to take it out of the oven. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees and I'm gonna set a timer for about 20 minutes and we'll see how that goes. And that, my friends, is how I make my chicken and shrimp, cheddar and broccoli rice casserole. I think it is high time that we go on ahead and dip the spoon into this bad boy because I know that's what y'all waiting to see. All right, let's dip into this bad boy. My God. Boy. Do you see that? Do you see that? Look at that. 
Look at this. Creamy, not dry. Holding on to the spoon. It's the perfect amount of cheese, to be quite frank. I think y'all need to try out this recipe, honey. Stop playing around. Okay. I know y'all waiting for me to do the taste test, right? My God. Let's go into it. Mm, my mouth is watering. And I can see I got a piece of chicken and shrimp on this bite. And let me get a piece of broccoli. Look at that bite. Mmm. Here we go. Ciao, bye.